We'll take this one from the Discord. Uh, from Skirty Curtis, I just finished the Bardwell DIY kit. I had about five flights with a strange motor jitter, even when disarmed in Motor 3. At about my fifth pack, all four ACs were dead. Sorry for laughing. I'm la laughing at your pain. I apologize. Uh, that was not where I thought the story was going to go. So you kind of surprised me. Uh, could the flux cause a failure in all four ESCs? I mean, if you're using acidic flux instead of no clean flux, yeah. I, 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 that may not be the answer you want to hear. I have seen cases where acidic flux caused shorts and smoke. Um, and I don't know why. I always use no clean flux and I've never had this issue. But I was working in somebody else's uh, facility there in, in their shop and they had bottles of regular flux. And so I was just using it like I always do, just glob it on there. And then sometimes when I would plug the quadcopter in the very first time after finishing the build, poof, we get this big poof of smoke. And it didn't damage anything as far as I could tell. But I was like, oh, crap, what was that? And I think it was the flux burning off. So if you were using large amounts of regular acidic flux instead of no clean flux, it's plausible that the flux would cause a failure. Um... He said it's H20 water soluble flux. He said it's not labeled as no clean, but I'm not familiar with that one. So if it doesn't say no clean, then like here here's the thing. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna just kind of like ah gotcha. It's your fault. Ha ha Because I've seen I've seen these ESCs die for no freaking reason. So like what I would do is I would go to get FPV. And I would say, hey, get FPV. I had a problem with this ASC from the moment I plugged it in. And then like on the fifth flight, it just died for no reason. Don't mention the flux. If they ask you about the flux, be honest, but don't mention the flux. And then just be like, hey, what can you do for me? Maybe they'll send you a new ASC. And then either clean the flux off or use no clean flux. Okay. Nobody show get FPV this segment of my stream. <laughs> Daniel Harmon says, no power to your Vista. Is it dead or is the flight controller not supplying power? How to test? Multimeter. You need a multimeter. That's how. Get out your multimeter and measure voltage. If you don't, and, and sometimes, and Daniel Harmon, I don't know if this is you, but sometimes when I, when I say this to people, they go, oh, I don't have a multimeter. And I'm like, oh, well, I guess we're done here. <laughs> right? I, 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 I don't know. I go, we're at a dead end. No, get a multimeter. Get a multimeter. You need a multimeter to work with electronics. So if you don't have one, you got to get one. They're not that expensive. Do you have one of those on your website for recommendation? Definitely. Definitely. I can go to fpvknowitall.com and go to, must have tools, I believe is where that's going to be. Multimeter. I still use the Innova 3320 to this day. And there have been times when I thought, maybe I should buy a Fluke because they sure are nice. And I never have. I just keep using that in over 3320. Yeah, I'm not going to spend $200 on a fluke multimeter. What kind of bougie asshole do you think I am? No. <laughs> yeah, if you don't know you need a fluke, you probably don't need a fluke. <laughs> I mean, they're nice. They're very nice to use. It's like. Also, field piece is great, too. Yeah. Field piece? What is that? I know that from HVAC. Field piece is great. Oh. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I bet. They have like, <laughs> so like that meter there at the top of it has like a snap in piece. So you can buy clamps that you can snap into the top and like you can do extensions from it. And it's like super versatile. They have like That's wireless cool. sensors too, that you can get to your phone and all kinds wow. of fancy stuff. It's almost as expensive as a fluke. Wow. Temperature. Okay. Yeah. What I like about the Fluke is that it has a, an almost analog style readout here. So like the old analog multimeters, you could watch, you could watch the, um, the needle move 
and you get a kind of a sense of the if it, that you don't get with digital readout. And I like on the flukes that they have this little readout at the bottom that that acts like that. Uh, but I'm not paying two hundred dollars for a fluke. Sorry, not gonna happen. Would I, Jeremy Pierce, Pierce Sinia, Thank you for a two dollars super chat. Would I ever use a JSON file in Betaflight? Uh, no. What Jeremy? Oops, sorry. What Jeremy's asking about is in beta. I better use a real flight controller. Hold on. Uh, what what he's talking about is if you go to. Where is it? If you go to. Did they get rid of this, Blunty? The save firmware button? Did they get rid uh, of it finally? It's under presets now, right? No, and that's changed, different. Right? That's actually a CLI dump. That's good. That right. doesn't make a JSON yeah, the, uh, file. The old one's gone to replace, and it's replaced by that. That's my Okay, thank God. So there used to be a button. I think it was in the setup tab that was save backup or save configuration, and it made a JSON file, and it was worthless. Don't use it. You would always want to do a CLI dump. Nowadays, you can go to presets and do save backup, and it creates an actual CLI dump, and that's what you want. So no, you would not use a JSON file. The only place you would theoretically potentially use a JSON file is the VTX tables are sometimes uh, conveyed as JSON files. And if you did load from file here, it would load a JSON file. But most people are who are loading a, a VTX table are going to do it from the presets tab. So in short, the answer is mostly no, you would not do that. All righty. We got about uh, 10 minutes left in the stream. Aaron Ciotti is going to be streaming at 10 o'clock. And he's going to start posting the link to his stream, which you guys can go watch uh, when I get off the air. But not yet. Not yet. <laughs> um, ooh, I like this question from Nick FPV. I'm going to jump on it. I just happened to notice it. Is ELRS dynamic output power reliable? Yeah, it, it, mostly, yeah. Like, theoretically, if you fly behind an obstacle, you could theoretically fail safe before it pumps the power. So if you know you're going to be flying, if you're like flying long range and you just fly slowly out and slowly back, you're fine. The dynamic is going to be fine. If you're flying in an environment like a bando where theoretically you might suddenly fly behind an elevator shaft and all of a sudden you've got a ton of additional uh, loss, then maybe I would want to lock at one watt instead of using dynamic. Um, if I were to run one watt power output, would it be better to have the XT30 on the back of the module plugged in? Uh, that depends on your radio. Some radios are not capable of delivering one watt's worth of power, whatever it's trying to pull, to the module bay. And in that case, you definitely would want to use uh, the XT30. Bear in mind that there are some Radio Master Ranger modules that are have defective XT30s and will fry I, may, I think they fry the radio, don't they, Blunty? Uh, yeah, that's correct. Uh, if you plug in the XT30 to the module, it will fry, fry the radio through the mm -hmm. pins in the module, I think. So definitely, um, if you have a, a Rev-1 Radio Master Ranger, they've put out replacements for this. Don't use the XT30, though. Um, if you have other modules, it's fine. Um, I don't think it's a downside to use the XT30 in most cases. It just means you're pulling uh, from a different battery. And some flight control, some radios can handle it, no problem. Uh, thank you for a $5 super chat. Uh, one Justin, I was wondering if I should get 2040k V motors for 6S. I can also go with Ethics V5s. The other option is RC and Power V4. Um, so, bro, uh, if you are confused about whether to get Ethics V5s or RC and Power V4s, then I don't think you know what you want out of your motor. And I mean that with the love of Jesus. I don't mean that in, like to be insulting or derogatory, but it's like if you said to me, I'm thinking about buying a car and I'm not sure if I want to get a, a Ford F-150 or a Miata. Those two things are so different that like 
you gotta you gotta narrow down what you want from your motor. The FX V5 is a intentionally less responsive, lower powered, like smoother, if you will, motor. The RCN Power V4 is a a, a balls out powerful motor, and like so, uh, and 2040 kV is pretty high kV for success, although not uh not out of like not unusably high so i think you got to figure out what you want from a motor before you decide whether you want the ethics v5s or an rcm power v4 because those are very very different motors um yeah um uh, philly style fpv says stripped screws on the nebula pro any fixing it uh no i mean can you get a spare case for a nebula pro i'm not even sure uh, find a 3D printed mount, maybe that will hold it or stick it in place. Um, 